Let's find the constitution. This lecture is designed in a unique way. You will be given clues for each source of the constitution. You will use these clues to figure out different sources that contain constitutional rules. Clue for the first source, what is passed by the parliament and becomes part of the law. It may not always be constitutional in nature, but sometimes it is. It has a different name before it is passed and is always signed by the constitutional head of the state. It does not contain general principles and conventions. If you have not guessed already, these are the acts of parliament. Remember, the parliament is supreme in its legislative powers, which means even if the act is constitutional in nature, it can still be repealed by the parliament by a simple procedure of repeal. This is, however, not true for documented constitutions like that of the US. What do you think which one of these constitutions is more flexible? Which one will have a greater protection for the rights and freedom of the people? Time for the next source hint. Listen carefully. The clue is that this source is produced by a group of officials that are not elected by the people. Instead, they are selected by their peers. They were once criticized as being a group that is stale, pale and male in the UK. They were part of the House of Lords a few years ago, but now have their own separate branch. The Constitutional Reform Act of 2005 established this new branch. This branch produces the sources of constitutional rules through statutory interpretation and common law methods. This source is secondary when compared to the Acts of Parliament. Precedent is used to establish these rules. If you haven't guessed it already, the group are the judges and the source is judicial decisions that come in the form of common law reports. Judicial review is also part of this source and is used to limit the powers of the ministers. The judicial review also keeps the public bodies accountable. A good example can be the case of Antic versus Carrington In this case, Mr. Carrington with a few other men entered the house of Antic under the orders of Secretary of State for the Northern Department. The orders were given by a member of the executive branch of the government. However, Antic sued Carrington for trespassing. Lord Camden held that public officials have no general power to enter and search property unless authorized by statute or common law. Let's look at the clues for the third source. Beware, this is a difficult one. The cabinet manual says that this source is not part of the law, but is binding in operation. According to Sir Jennings, this means that they are normative in nature and are to be thought of as a customary law. This of course does not mean that they have to be always followed. They are to be abandoned when they do not have a reason to be followed. The reason can be the strengthening of the democratic process, the rule of law, or a political philosophy. Dicey calls them the understandings, practices, and habits of the ministers, members of the parliament, and other members of sovereign power. The answer is constitutional conventions. They are to be seen as less formal than laws. Dicey points out that the public officials hold them because if they don't hold them, then their conduct will come in direct conflict with the legal system. Sir Jennings argues differently by stating that there are several instances where a broken convention will not lead to the results stated by Dicey. As you can see, this is the beauty of the conventions that they provide practical flexibility in conducting the business of the state. The result is a form of governance that is based on tradition and is ready to adapt to new challenges and changes in the society. Do you think the government should try to invest in a software system that can predict the ripple effect of a broken convention? Do you think this will be a helpful tool for public officials in making decisions and for the public in their understanding of the constitution? Here are the clues for the fourth source of constitution. It's a pan-national organization. The main idea behind its constitution was peace. 
The decisions made by the legislative, executive and judicial branches are influenced by this organization and its influence has changed the most orthodox principle of the UK's constitution known as the supremacy of the parliament. The answer is European Union. The European Court of Justice in a landmark decision Costa v. Enel 1964 established that EU law has supremacy over the member state law. An Italian citizen, Mr. Costa, challenged the government's decision to nationalize the electricity department and refused to pay the bill issued by the new national company, Enel. The court partially ruled in favor of Enel. However, the court also established that it is important that community law is not to be deemed subordinate to national law, therefore establishing the supremacy of EU law. In view of this case, what do you think how do judges in UK decide cases where the national law comes in conflict with the community law? We will be exploring the answer to this question later. The clues for the final source are the following. It is a kind of law that is heavily influenced by international events. It has become more relevant in the last 50 years by globalization. It has established international organizations like the World Trade Organization to promote international trade and has given rise to the notion of basic human rights and liberties. If you are thinking international law, you are correct. International organizations like United Nations and NATO are governed by international law. The international law has an influence on the constitutional framework of UK because UK has to work with other nations when dealing with issues like terrorism, smuggling, human rights violation, policy and fraud.